Good morning and welcome to the official launch of Amun, or a brand new tool for bespoke wind farm valuations. My name is Mateusz Wronski and I'm the head of product development at Aurora. Uh, and I'm joined today for this presentation by Donna Peng, who is the product manager for Amun. Hi, very glad to be here. Okay, before we start, just two points of logistics. Uh, we will go for about 25 to 30 minutes of presentation, and uh, at the end, we'll reserve five to 10 minutes for questions. So please do ask questions throughout. We'll get to them uh, at the end. And use the Q&A capability of your WebEx interface. So don't use the chat one, which also allows you to communicate, but use the Q&A one. The chat ones won't come to, you, to us. We're both very excited to, to share with you this demonstration of, of Amun, which is a tool a piece of software that uh, ourselves, Donna and me, as well as a team of software engineers and data scientists in Aurora have been working on for the past uh, eight, eight months or so. Uh, so what is Amun? Amun is a tool that allows you to very quickly understand the exact economics of a given wind site by combining Aurora's in-house trusted price curves with detailed wind data and with detailed data on turbines, and all of that within just a few clicks. And we built it because we, re we realized that, uh, or, or we know that location will increasingly drive revenue. That knowing where you are, how correlated you are with the fleet will be what matters to what prices you capture in the market. And also that as we move towards space that is more merchant, that as you deploy wind farms uh, without government's help, understanding the economics of your assets, understanding the price that you capture uh, will, be, will become more critical, and there is a growing appetite amongst our clients to, to understand these capture prices and to quantify them. So over the last 24 months or so, before we even started building Amun, we received a number of requests for this type of exact work, site-specific uh, revenue and capture price forecasts, and that was in different contexts, be it uh, valuation by developers when you have a specific site, or our equity investors who are looking to invest in a site, CFD bids and how you how you formulate your bid depending on your merchant's tail, uh, even site scanning by commercial teams um, looking to understand how different regions compare to each other with regards to the economics and, and, and wind marketers as well. So so people who effectively take some of that price risk and the PPAs and put it out the market. So in all these contexts, we've had this increasing demand. We've done tens of these types of uh, valuations. And each time we would do it, we would do it quite, 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 quite manually. So we've combined hundreds of thousands of data points, hourly prices, hourly wind, um, turbine, uh, power curve, and uh, and it was a, 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 a you know quite time-consuming and quite quite costly process in a sense. And what we thought we could do is is invest a few months with a team of developers, team of data scientists to automate this process. The premise there was that that that, that we could save our clients a lot of money and time. By, by this automation, that, that you know, rather than spending 15, 30K and two to four weeks every time you want to understand the bespoke economics of your wind farm, you can you know, pay that much or less for the actual unlimited access for a number of valuations delivered within minutes with the same level of accuracy. And, and, and I suppose the reaction of, of the industry has been, has been very positive to that. Uh, we've had uh, just a very successful trial. Donna, you led this trial. Uh, can you tell us a little more? Yes, of course. Uh, about the trial, we had uh, 15 clients from a wide range of backgrounds joining us. We had leading developers, utilities, and funds, so a diverse mix. And throughout the trial, they gave us very valuable feedback, ranging from the user experience to the methodology underpinning the tool. Uh, but what I'm most excited by is the reception of the tool by our clients. Their level of engagement and interest really uh, excited me. So uh, even before today's official launch, many of them have already signed up for a moon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is okay, how this, these premises that we've been speaking about have, yeah. been, have been have been validated as, in a sense. Uh, and I suppose what we're doing right now is jump to the tool and show you the tool and show its capabilities, mm -hmm. but also show you one of these premises in action in a sense. So like I said, there were three. Automation can save you uh, it cost and, 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 and time uh, in doing this site-specific forecast. Growing merchant exposure means prices mean matter more. And the third premise was location matters increasingly, and that's what we'll show you. We'll use Amun to show you just how much 
location matters. So what I will do now is share my screen uh, and jump into showing you showing you a moon. So this is the first thing you will see as you log into the tool. It's a map-based interface that allows you to click anywhere on the map and start analyzing the exact economics of that site. So let's let's take a look. Let's 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 try and build somewhere. I suppose not too controversial. Let's say somewhere in Scotland. Uh, and let's say this is our first our first valuation. So let's call it uh, South Scotland. The first thing you need to do is specify the name. You can also do a bit of description. Uh, and the tool already tells you that you are in the Great British um, price zone, meaning that our uh, GB price forecast will apply. And the first step is technology. So you have to specify what type of turbine you'll be using. We have a rich database of around 200 different turbines. And let's see, we build something relatively large, uh, 3.6 megawatts, 120 meter rotor diameter Siemens turbine. And you can already see it actually displayed here. So here is the power curve um, that can, can, can tell you how this particular turbine behaves at different wind speeds. Uh, according to the uh, to the manufacturer. Yeah. Before uh, we go on to the other parameters, uh -huh. I would like to point out that if you're working with a custom wind turbine that is not publicly available, uh, its parameters, you can upload its power curve into a moon uh, through uh, our custom power curve function, and then you will be able to use it in your bespoke valuation subsequently, you and your team. And you will be the only people with access to this power mm -hmm. curve. So you download the turbine, and upload your custom yeah. custom power curve so that won't be visible yeah. to anyone apart from your yeah. your team. Cool. But let's stick with a uh, let's stick with the Siemens one. You have to specify a few other parameters. How many turbines you want to deploy? Let's say let's say we're doing ten. Actually, let's do a bigger one. Twenty. Uh, aggregated losses. Uh, so so how much in total, including weight losses, electric, electrical losses, etc. Uh, plus hub height. This is a bigger turbine, so let's maybe give it a bigger. Hub height, uh, voila, we are done with technology. The next step is to specify wind data. So we give you two options at the moment. You can either use our inbuilt uh, ERA5 data set, or you can upload your own custom. So ERA5 is our default, um, and you can already see that the wind speed is displayed at the chart at the bottom. So you have this familiar power curve from the previous page, and you can see the distribution of wind according to ERA5 database uh, 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 plotted plotted against it. Uh, Donna, what is ERA5 exactly? Just to just before we move uh, on. Yes. So not all of you might be very familiar with ERA5. It is the newest generation of reanalysis data, and reanalysis data is historical modeled climate data based on uh, sensor data across the world. So being of the newest generation allows ERA5 to have the highest granularity of all such data sets. And there was an academic study comparing ERA5 to other data sets, such as uh, MERA2 produced by NASA and for a large range of European countries. Mm. And it has been calling ERA5 the champion of wind modeling. And especially good in Europe, right? Because yes. it's a European, European agency that effectively does it. Exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's, that's what ERA5 is. That's the default, but you can also, I suppose, no, no reanalysis data can beat uh, your own measurements. So we allow you to, if you do have these measurements, uh, you can you can upload them. You can again use the same type of uh, interface, download the template, populate it, upload it, and it's the same logic as with the turbines. But let's uh, use the ERA5 data this time, and we can and we can move on to. To the next page. Mm -hmm. uh, so the other thing is the parameters, ah, right? So you can exactly. So if you're using ERA5 data, you can further specify how we are to interpolate wind at different heights. Mm -hmm. So uh, you use uh, those parameters like roughness, length, and etc. So um, this allows us to uh, zoom in on the wind series for your exact location. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've done the turbine. We've done the wind. Let's move on to the prices. Let's move on to the market. So what you can select here is one of Aurora's price scenarios. So we're obviously a modeling company. We uh, model uh, uh, a range of scenarios, including our central low and high cases that are used in a number of transactions in the market, both debt and equity. Um, and these are the scenarios that allow you to, 
that we that we make available through Amun. And you can select one of them. You can also see here we have a smart power scenario. This is one of interesting equity cases for for wind more broadly, but for renewables because it's a kind of flexible system world. Uh, but our standard trusted scenarios, central, low and high, and P10, P90 are all here. So let's select the central scenario. What you can see already here is um, is the price curves in that scenario, the base price, as well as the fleet-wide, the average onshore wind capture price, average offshore wind capture price. So these are not yet the site-specific ones, just to be clear. Mm -hmm. This is what we see on, on, on average. Yeah, right? these are the benchmark prices. Mm. And just to point your attention toward um, the name of the scenario here, Aura Central 2019 April. And that is indicating that this is uh, our uh, scenario publishing April this year. As we update our assumptions and produce uh, the newest version of scenarios with our research team, uh, of course, you will also be able to access them here in the drop down list. So it will be growing over time to contain the newest scenarios. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. So we're ready. We can press press go and uh, allow Amun to do its magic. So uh, the numbers are crunching. It will take around 30 seconds. And what Amun is doing at the moment is taking the granular wind data, 9,000 half hours per year, uh, combining it with a power curve to get half hourly production data, and then that production data is combined with our prices to get site-specific capture prices, and you can see them already on the screen. So on the left-hand side, you've got the revenue, which is, in a sense, broken down into production in the top right corner and prices in the bottom mm -hmm. right corner. Donna, what can we say about this wind farm? If we look at the capture price and compare the site-specific one to the benchmark prices, we can say that um, for this site, its capture price tracks the onshore fleet until maybe the last 10 years of its life. So when they have very similar capture price with this fleet, this means that this wind farm is generating at the same time, roughly, mm -hmm. as the onshore fleet, and therefore it is able to capture the similar level of wholesale prices. And in the last years, when it decouples, uh, this is because there is improvement in the technology employed at the fleet level, uh, especially the repowering of a lot of existing sites. However, for this specific asset in question, we are not changing uh, the technological assumption, so it does not improve its performance in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So not, not a great asset from a kind of capture price perspective, at least. No. What about the load factor? Uh, we see that the load factor, uh, notice the scale, this is uh, a scale it's been truncated, so we, uh, it, it's a load factor that's relatively constant. It's always in the lower 30s. However, in the middle years, we see some fluctuation, and that is because in the moon, we apply economic curtailment, meaning that whenever prices are below the marginal cost of your wind farm, uh, we will be curtailing the production. So in the middle years, there are more instances of negative prices, and that is we see lower production mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. those years. So I suppose this is when we have the largest amount of subsidized exactly. wind in the system, right? Exactly. And then the subsidies expire mm -hmm. and it kind of goes up again. Okay, so this is the first wind farm, 33% uh, roughly average load factor for, 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 for Scotland. So we've got a, a, wind, a, a capture price that isn't so great because you're very correlated with the rest of the fleet. Uh, one thing before we move to the second valuation is just to show you the Excel capability. So, you can look at all these results at a higher level of granularity uh, in Excel. So um, what you have here is effectively yearly output, but also the same data on a quarterly level, monthly level, and all the inputs underpinning the valuation. So distribution of wind and all the parameters you had specified mm -hmm. before. Okay, so we said we would uh, demonstrate the capabilities. I think we've done that, but we also said we would show you just how much location matters. Yes. Uh, Donna, for that, we want to probably do another wind farm which does slightly better than this. Yes. Uh, and I think the best way to do this is use the valuation manager function because we want to compare only the location. We do not want to change other assumptions about the site. So let me, uh, we are already on at this exact uh, valuation, so I'm not going to change anything else. I'm just going to return to the beginning where we select location and change where I'm putting my wind farm. And also, just for clarity, I might change its name uh, later so we don't get confused. I have overwritten this exact one. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to uh, more remote Scotland, given this is where the currency is not. And let's say I select this location in northern Scotland. 
I will change his name so I don't get confused. So keeping everything else constant, right? Yes. Yeah. You just, you just so I'm not going to change the turbine, the the, the losses, etc. I'm going to jump directly to the last valuation tab, and this will refresh the valuation, changing only the location which I have modified. Same scenario, same yeah. wind. Yes. So same let's do that. And then we go to results. So 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 it's effectively now just replacing the wind speed, right? It's taking the wind speed from from this location, mm -hmm. and uh, and 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 uh, comparing. Okay, cool. So we've got the results, uh, and yeah, you can see it's doing better, right? I mean, especially if you compare it to the static benchmark of onshore wind, uh, you can see that it's significantly above. Uh, yes, uh -huh. indeed. So we can say that it's uh, above the onshore feed almost oh, exactly throughout the whole uh, horizon of the forecast. Mm -hmm. And uh, note, notice that on the uh, low factor front, it's all also a similar level. It's about in the lower 30s. Okay, so it's effectively the low, the capture price difference here really does stem solely from mm -hmm. correlation, right? Because the the load factor is pretty much identical. Okay, let's 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 just dig a little bit deeper and compare them kind of side by side because I think uh, it's it's uh, just to maybe drive this point home a little bit to see how big a difference location location matters. So if we if we look at the Excel capability, it allows you to um, to do exactly that. Copy perhaps the capture price of this particular one uh, paste it somewhere underneath just to just to compare them side by side I'm grabbing the other one paste it here Oops. okay there you go so you can see that yeah it's it's five five pounds Per megawatt hour. Actually, let's see exactly how much it is. Uh, let's let's take a difference and see and see how much it is. Uh, so if I subtract this one from this one, yeah, it's, it's okay, it's five in the last so five, year. Five yeah. up to five five pounds, right? Growing over time. So same load factor, different correlation with the fleet, and what we end up with is a significantly significantly different capture prices. Uh, solely as a result of that, of that correlation. And that matters a lot for the economics, right? I mean, five pounds obviously matters, but just to, um, just to illustrate how it impacts uh, a wind farm's uh, ability to generate revenue, it's roughly 130, 150 pounds per kilowatt in, in terms of uh, MPV, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so 150 pounds per kilowatt in MPV. So if you're building a, a 200 megawatt wind farm, you effectively make it worth 30 million uh, more just as a result of capture prices. So if you if you look at uh, if you look at the IRR, it's two percentage points of uh, on a on an IRR basis mm -hmm. for a wind farm that you build in early 2020s. Again, solely as a result of how correlated you are with the rest of the fleet. Okay, I hope this convinces you that location does matter, and I think it will matter even more because we are moving towards uh, with the recent pledges of net zero. That means that we will be deploying more wind, that wind won't be equally distributed. And because you don't distribute it equally, you magnify these differences in capture prices. So location matters and it will matter more. Okay, so just to, just to recap, let's stop sharing the screen and let's go back to our presentation. Just to recap, what does Amun do? Well, it allows you to get accurate site-specific valuations in minutes. Like you see, we've done two uh, with Donna while walking you through it, and it took us roughly 15 minutes. So if you, if you weren't talking, I'm sure you could do 20 in that. In this and time. and uh, if you are asking on automation like me, uh, then you should definitely use the API to access them, which will be even faster. So you can drive it down to seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I've limited access. So you can do the same thing over and over again without any limitations. You can understand the relative economics of your wind park comparing hundreds of sites. So in the context of a, a competitive, for example, CFD auction, or just to understand how the supply curve shapes, I think uh, this tool really uh, allows you to do that at no additional cost. Bankable results, we're using the same exact amount, the same exact methodology as we would if you commissioned us or if you commissioned anyone else to do it for you in a sense manually. So we use the best in class wind data or your own measurements that you can give us. We use our trusted price curves 
and the methodology for combining it with wind turbines and with the power curves is exactly the same as you would do in a kind of commission basis. Robust risk analysis. We're not just giving you the central case. Uh, what we often get asked is how different market uncertainties can pan out, affect your asset, and Amun allows you to do it automatically. You don't have to ask us anymore. You can look at it yourself. And it's always up to date, uh, which means that, uh, again, without picking up the phone, you will see the latest forecast pushed through, or latest market change uh, directly filtered through how it impacts your particular asset through, through Amun. Yes. Uh, make sure you have summarized the key benefits of Amun. Can you just also uh, review who are the key users? Awesome. Mm, yeah, yeah. So like I said, I, I suppose the same people who used to ask us for these for these bespoke valuations. Like I said, developers in the context of looking at particular sites, uh, scanning scanning the uh, map and seeing where capture prices are better, bidding in CFD auctions, but also equity investors who are looking at these sites and looking at you know how much they should pay for wind farm, how much they should be, uh, how much that locational difference should affect the valuation of that wind farm. Mm -hmm. Same with uh, banks. We've got a P90 bankable. Uh, scenario that's often used for debt sizing and 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 wind marketers as well. Like I said, uh, the people who are taking that risk uh, uh, under PP, actually anyone under PPAs really, because uh, obviously you want to understand the exact profile of your asset if you're on either side of the PPA. So if you're a corporate, if you're a utility, if you're a a, a trader, you need to understand um, these exact uh, relative economics. Okay, Donna, so you've uh, delivered a moon. Mm -hmm. uh, what's next for you? So in the process of working with our clients, uh, I have learned that there are many other ways that a process in their workflow could be automated and integrated with them. Mm -hmm. So I'm very uh, excited to have the opportunity to continue w working with my team of software engineers and data analysts to extend a moon in all those interesting possibilities. Mm -hmm. And what were you most excited about? I think personally, I'm most in, excited by uh, the cost side of the equation. So uh, in Amun, we have dived deep into site-specific revenue forecast. Mm -hmm. um, and now we are aware that there are now a lot of other things, uh, cost items that we could look into that are tied to location. Mm -hmm. For example, grid access charges, tenures, goodwill stores, etc. And there are the connection costs, depending on how far you are to the grid. Uh, there are other things. Uh, like location specific balancing cost or even the land cost. So mm -hmm. uh, many things to look into. So location matters for revenue, but it also matters, matters for, for cost. cost. And that's, you know, I, I'll tell you mine. I think what I'm most excited about is scalability of it. So I think a lot of our clients operate on an international basis and to be able to deliver to them a methodology that's consistent across multiple countries and we can scale it relatively easily. I think that's also, I think, what uh, automation allows you, allows you for. <laughs> exactly. Um, great. So I said we would be 25 minutes and we are back on time. So uh, we have a little bit of time for questions. Let's take a look at the questions that, we, that have come through. The first question is about uh, when are you thinking of expanding to Germany, uh, Germany and France? When are we thinking of expi expanding to Germany and France? I think the um, short answer is as soon as possible. The more precise one is by the end of the year, we're hoping to be in both of these countries. And like I said, uh, the scalability of uh, of this piece of software means that um, that we can do that relatively quickly. We can upload a new country, combine it. In terms of that roadmap more broadly, France and Germany are both uh, are the kind of uh, um, front end of that uh, roadmap. So I think we'll be tackling them very soon. Uh, the other countries are Iberia. We're also trying to get as soon as possible, and we will be there also. I think uh, in, in 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 Q1 next year at the latest. And uh, the next one, the very next one is uh, Australia. Yes, Australia, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is uh, which is uh, exciting for our colleague Hugo, um, who's very keen to who's very keen to um, uh, expand it to 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 to, to clients there. Uh, the thing about I suppose Germany and France is that, um, and I'm not sure whether this question is coming from that perspective, but in both of these countries, the CFD contracts are. Uh, are structured in a way that that um, locational element matters, right? Because mm -hmm. you get paid, your reference price is effectively the fleet-wide uh, reference price. So 
that would mean that uh, effectively if you don't capture the fleet, well, if you capture less or if you capture more, that's a risk or a, an upside even under the subsidy. So you don't have to be merchant to be affected by this in both France and, mm -hmm. and, and, and Germany, which I suspect is what the person asking the question maybe, maybe had in mind. Okay. Um, what about P90 Windia? Do you okay? Do we want to Donna? Do we want to upload P90 Windia? It's obviously one of the key risks for uh, asset owners. Isn't just price; it's also the volume. We haven't really focused that much on the volume yet. What is your take uh, on this? It is an area that we are very uh, interested in. We are aware that is becoming of uh, more and more interest, and we are looking at not just the P90 weather year, but considering a large range of weather years and giving you the results contained as in a distribution instead of a single value. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, we will allow you to run, say, 10 weather years at the same time and see how uh, your asset will perceive, uh, perform uh, while under those different weather conditions. Mm. I think the interesting point there is also that um, P90 weather year, I suppose, if it happens on a fleet-wide basis, it actually affects the prices, right? Because you low, low wind, I mean, typically slightly higher price, which I don't yeah. think is necessarily captured by a, by a lot of this typical P90 analysis. No, there's some ne negative feedback uh, within this. So yes, so it, there is uh, some uh, increasing price if everyone is having a low wind here. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. in our, the way that we run it, we will be able to capture this because we will be using different weather gear, not just at your site level, but also at the fleet level. Mm -hmm. You're showing load factor which decreases is it because of congestions. No, it's not because of congestions. Um, so Donna mentioned this is because of economic curtailment, mm -hmm. which means that uh, effectively wind farms in their model curtail when the price is uh, below their marginal cost. That's typically zero if you're merchant, or it can be way below zero um, if you are under a subsidy. Uh, but a good question, uh, congestions. Uh, uh, is congestion something we, we don't incorporate congestions at the moment like you said there's no. ways to extend no, a move yeah. and also make other parts of uh, people's workflows i think looking at congestion could certainly be one of those yes so uh a very relatively quick way that we can start looking at the impact of congestion is just having an idea where historically uh congestion curtailment has happened and we are currently uh screening detailed bm actions uh, associated with different units located in different places and seeing where historically most of those curtailments have happened and when did they tend to happen. So we'll be able to also uh, integrate that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The historical overviews are yeah. probably, I mean, second guessing where grid is going to build in the future is probably slightly tricky, but at least we can give people a sense as to where congestions are now, right? Yes. Great. Well, it's 10.30 exactly, uh, which means that uh, we should wrap up here. But before we do, uh, just to just to uh, summarize, if you're interested in the moon, if you think location matters, if you think uh, that uh, uh, you would like to save yourself a lot of money and time by having this automated within this nice interface, then do get in touch. Um, and get in touch now, because until the 15th of November, we are offering very attractive discounts for early adopters, uh, and we are we are very happy to uh, show you the tool to provide you with an access to a trial. Uh, we'll be running two week trials, so if you if you'd like to test it for yourself, we're more than happy to provide you with a, a trial account. Get in touch with either myself or Oliver Kerr, whose email address you can also see here. Obviously, after the 15th of November, the prices will prices will increase. Uh, well, thank you very much for uh, listening to us, to all of you. If we haven't got to your question, please uh, uh, expect to hear from us because we will be getting in touch with you via email. We try to answer all these questions. But thanks a lot for dialing in this morning. Uh, and thank you, Donna, for, for joining me today. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.